Hello everyone and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. How are you doing today? That's good to hear. Let's sing our good morning song together. Stretch your arms out like airplane wings. We'll fly to one side, over to the other side, fly back to the middle, big stretch out in front. Now take that circle up over your head and let's stretch on this side over to the other side. One last stretch up at the top, and now we can sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends. I hope that you all are having a great day so far. Before we get started with the calendar and weather chart, we have a few things that we need to do quickly. Number one, let's turn on our listening ears. Next, we have to put on our thinking hats. Today, my thinking hat has a zipper underneath my chin. So I'm going to zip it up. And the last thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts like this. Boom, 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 boom. So let's double check. Our listening ears are on, our thinking hats are on, and our hearts are all warmed up. Now let's go over the date together. Here's the month. This month is so close to being over. Do you know what the month is called? August, that's right. Today is August 31st. Yesterday was August 30th. Today is August 31st and the year is 2021 or 2021. Look at this friends. Today is the last day of August. We are at the very end. Tomorrow, we are going to begin a brand new month. Listen carefully for the words in the next song and see if you can hear what month comes after August. If you know the words, sing along with me. January, February, March and April, May and June. July and August, September, October, November, December, 12 months in a year. Did you hear that? September will be here tomorrow. Today is the last day of August. Tomorrow will be the first day of September. Let's hold up our seven fingers and sing the Days of the Week song. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Let's go down to the bottom of the chart and go over the days together. This says that yesterday was M. Monday, the first day of the weekday. That means that today is Tuesday and tomorrow will be w Wednesday. But let's go back and sing today's Tuesday together. Are you ready? Today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday all day long. Today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday, today is Tuesday all day long. And if we go back up to the top, top, right up here we have the season. What's the season, friends? Summer. You're right. It's still summertime where I live. And if we travel down to the bottom, that means that it's time to sing the weather song together. And then we can share what we see outside. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? Today where I live, it's mostly cloudy outside with a little bit of sun. Yesterday, it was the opposite. 
there was more sunshine than clouds, but today there are more clouds than sunshine. We may even get some thunderstorms later today. My temperature chart is on orange because it's warm, warm and mostly cloudy. What do you see outside of your window today? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. Yesterday, we learned a new uppercase letter. Do you remember the sound that this letter makes? That's right. <sighs> what letter is this? H. This is a capital H. H says And now it's time to guess what's inside of the letter box. But today it's not inside of the letter box. It's actually something that's on my body. So that was your first clue. Something on my body, so a body part that starts with the letter H. Your other clue is that it sits on top of my neck. What is that? My head. So this is my head. It's a part of my body that sits on top of my neck. And on my head, I have my hair. I have other body parts like my ears, my nose, my eyes, and my mouth. Can you point to your head? There it is. Head starts with the letter H. This is how you write in uppercase H. One more time. And here is the number of the week. This is the number 14. Friends, when you write the number 14, can you tell me what number you write first? One. And then after the number one, what number do you write next? Four. One. Four. Fourteen. Let's count to the number fourteen together using the large bead frame. This week we're going to count to the number fourteen using the large bead frame. In order to get to fourteen, we need four units. One, two, three, four, and one ten. Fourteen. I have some flowers to count with you today that are inside of the number box. So as we are counting higher numbers, my flowers are starting to form a bouquet because I have more of them to count. I have these white clover flowers and as I count them, I'll line them up across the top so we can count together. Are you ready? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and one more makes fourteen. Fourteen clover flowers. Yesterday I showed you how to say friend in sign language. Do you remember how? Let's do that together. Friend. Way back at the beginning of the school year, we did a month-long unit on transportation. We learned about ways to travel by air, land, and water. Do you remember a form of transportation that travels underwater? A submarine or a sub for short, travels under the water. But why would someone want to travel under the water? Scientists use submarines to study life under the water, and those subs have specific cameras and tools to do so. Speaking of scientists, today's work is an exciting science experiment. Are you ready to see what it is? For today's work tray, we are doing a science experiment. So you're going to need a cup of water, or you could fill a bowl. I liked using this clear mason jar because it's transparent, 
which means that I could see through it, which is going to be pretty important for this science experiment. And then I have different items that I found around the house. You literally could use anything. I have some blocks, a wooden one, and a plastic one, a pebble, an acorn, a piece of chalk, and a pine cone. So what I'm going to do is take each item and I'm going to drop it in to my glass of water and I'm going to observe to see if it sinks down to the bottom or if it's buoyant, which means that it stays on top and floats. Before I drop each item in, I'm going to make a guess or a prediction. So let's start with a piece of chalk. I predict that this chalk is going to sink because it's a little bit heavy. I wonder if I'm going to be right. Let's check it out. Here goes the chalk. Oh, did you see that? I was right. The chalk sunk to the bottom of the glass. Okay, let's move on to another item. Hmm. Let's move on to the pine cone. I predict that this pine cone is going to float because it's buoyant. Let's see if I'm right. Here it goes. <gasps> Look at that. The pine cone is floating on top of the water. Now, Let's try this plastic block. Hmm. I predict that this block is going to start on top of the water, but once it fills up with water in this crack, it's going to get heavy and sink. I wonder if that is right. Let's test out my prediction. Look at that. It's floating. But what happens if I fill the crack with water? I'm going to fill it up. Oh, my prediction was wrong. It's still floating, even though it's heavy with water. Interesting. Let's see. I wonder if the same thing will happen with this wooden block. Mm, but I predict that this is going to sink. It's heavier than the plastic block, but I could be wrong. Let's check out my prediction. Oh, I was wrong again. This wooden block is floating at the top. Hmm. All right, I'm pretty sure that this rock is going to sink to the bottom. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. Here it goes. That went right to the bottom. My prediction was correct. All right, friends, I have one more item. This is an acorn top. Now this is pretty light, so I think that it's going to be buoyant and stay at the top and float. Let's see. Oh, I was right. The acorn top is floating at the top. So once circle time is done, it will be your turn to do the science experiment. But let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. Before we go, I have another cool experiment to share with you. One egg is going to sink and the other egg is going to float. Let's take a guess which one will do so. For today's experiment, I have two eggs. I'm going to drop one egg into the fresh water and the other egg into the salt water. And then I'm going to see if they sink or if they float. So right here, I have my fresh water. This water does not have any salt in it. And over here, I have an empty jar and I'm going to make the salt water. So I have some salt right here. I'm just going to take some spoonfuls of salt. I'm going to add quite a lot of it. I want to make sure that this water is very dense. Salt water is more dense than fresh water. So I have the salt. Next, I'm going to add some water. I'm 
I want to make sure that I have the same amount of water in both jars. A little bit more. And now I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to mix it up. Mix the salt into the water and make sure that it dissolves. So keep mixing until I don't see any more salt at the bottom. When I'm mixing, I like to mix around and then up and down. It helps to make sure that all of the salt is dissolved. There we go. I don't really see much salt left. Okay, let's move on to the fun part. So first, let's make a prediction or take a guess. When I take this egg and I drop it into the fresh water, do you think that the egg will float or do you think that it will sink down to the bottom? What's your prediction? Okay, let's see what happens. That egg went right to the bottom. The egg sunk. And now let's take another guess. What do you think is going to happen when I take this egg and drop it into the salt water? Do you think it's going to float or sink? What's your prediction? Let's test it out. Wow, friends, do you see this egg? It's bobbing up to the top. It's floating. This egg is more buoyant in the salt water. That's why it's floating. So let's go over this. I have the fresh water here and the egg dropped right down to the bottom. But in the salt water, because the salt water is more dense, the egg is floating to the top. That was pretty cool. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up, and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Before we go, we have one more song to sing, so let's wave like this. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.